Lippich P13A. When conventional fuel supplies started running low in Nazi Germany, Luftwaffe designers came up with the P13A. This experimental ramjet-powered Delta Wing interceptor was to be powered by small granules of coal. The idea originated in 1942, when German aeronautical engineer Alexander Lippitsch envisioned an innovative interceptor fighter to be launched to supersonic speeds via catapult or booster rockets. The result was the P-11 Power Wing. Although the small aircraft would not carry any equipment, it was heavily reinforced to ram enemy aircraft in ferocious mid-air combat. But there was a catch to this new type of aerial combat. The leaf-shaped Delta Wing prototype was disposable, which meant that the pilot had to bail out to survive the encounter after ramming into his opponent. The P-12 variant incorporated a nose intake, raised canopy, and winglets that gave it a curiously shaped design. The P-13A version has minimal changes. It was solid fuel-powered and featured folding sections for transportation purposes. This aircraft used coal for two specific reasons. By 1944, the German economy was already severely crippled, and conventional fuels were running low. Plus, Lippitsch had realized that coal was more effective and controllable for combustion. To store the granules of coal, he created a spinning circular basket mechanism that revolved on a vertical axis at 60 RPM and boosted thermodynamic efficiency. A prototype of the model, the DM-1 test glider, was tested in late 1944, but Lippitsch lost interest in the project after realizing it would not change the war's tide. When the U.S. ventured further into German territory in early 1945, they captured the prototype and ordered Lippitsch and his team to finish it. The test aircraft was shipped to America along with Lippitsch. Under NACA, the American National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, positive tests were conducted with the experimental aircraft, which eventually led to the future creation of Convair's XF-92. After working with the U.S. Army, Lippitsch created his own aircraft company and developed the early ideas around VTOLs, or vertical takeoff and landing airplanes. In 1985, he was inducted into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame at the San Diego Air and Space Museum for his work on various aircraft designs. French Payant PA-22 Originally designed to be powered by a ramjet engine, the French Payant PA-22 was conceived as a racing airplane, but the onset of World War II required its redevelopment as a propeller-driven lightweight fighter to stop the German Luftwaffe. In April 1935, Nicolas Roland Payen, founder of the Gauls and Attismons Association and passionate aircraft designer who created his first plane by age 14, flew the first Delta-winged aircraft. The experimental Payen PA-22 featured a set of Delta wings behind the traditional straight wings usually designed at the time. The fuselage had a cockpit placed further back than usual and was almost hidden with the vertical fin. The strange-looking design was dubbed the Fleche, or Aero, for its delta wings that resembled an aero tip. The prototype was powered by a Mello 1R engine, one of the ramjet, or flying stovepipe's precursors. It was first tested in a wind tunnel at Chalet Moudon, Paris, but the primitive ramjet engine did not live up to the expectations, as it failed to meet the required thrust to drive the Aero. Ayan developed it to participate in the future Coupe Deutsche de la Moët air race of 1939. However, the ramjet engine's ongoing technical problems and the imminent war against Germany led to the cancellation of the aircraft. Dissuaded by its unorthodox shape, the French Air Ministry did not place an order for the PA-22 and instead focused on more essential war matters. After the furious Blitzkrieg campaign against France in 1940, the Germans took over Paris and discovered Payant's aero prototype. Intrigued by the aircraft, German engineers modified it and conducted numerous wind tunnel tests. During this testing period, the PA-22 achieved a maximum speed of 360 kilometers, with a cruise speed of 330 kilometers. Seeing that it had potential, they redesignated it PA-22V5, gave it the iconic Luftwaffe colors and logos, and sent it to the captured French airbase of Villa Coublet for more testing. Modifications included additional fuel tanks to increase its range to 1,200 kilometers, a variable pitch propeller, and other small improvements that would make it more powerful. Nevertheless, during one Allied bombing raid at the Truvisi factory in 1943, the only existing prototype was lost forever. Before destruction, the PA-22 measured 7.48 meters in length, 2.35 meters in height, 
and a wingspan of 4.8 meters. Its weight was roughly 560 kilograms. After the war, Ayan stayed very active in the aviation world. He invented other aircraft called crossbows, which were thrust-powered airplanes. He tested missiles, helicopters, and flew more than 100 aircraft. Curtis Wright XP-55 Ascender. Thanks to its rear-facing pusher propeller design, the American Curtis Wright XP-55 Ascender was referred to as the Ass Ender. A special lever had to be included to jettison the propeller to prevent pilots from hitting it while bailing out. The unusual configuration came from a 1939 U.S. Air Corps request for unorthodox solutions to improve pilot visibility in armament space. A strange design for its time, the XP-55 had a canard configuration with a rear-mounted Pratt & Whitney X-1800 engine, swept wings, and two vertical tails that gave it an arrow-like appearance. In 1940, Curtis received an Army contract for a wind tunnel model under the P-55 designation. Although the Air Corps did not like the results, Curtis decided to build a full-scale model to continue testing. During these trials, Curtis changed to other engine configurations and armaments, alternating between 20mm cannons and 50 caliber Browning machine guns. The first XP-55 flew in July 1943, and the performance was mediocre. Takeoff was very long for the aircraft. In November 1943, pilot Harvey Gray performed a test flight in which the plane went into an unexpected descent of 4,900 meters, leading to its destruction. One year later, the second XP-55 was modified with a larger nose elevator and upgraded control systems. Still, it proved to be underpowered. The result of these ongoing failures was the third and last prototype, which added four-foot wingtip extensions. The prototype had its maiden flight in May 1945, when the war had finished in Europe, but was still raging in the Pacific Ocean. During the closing day of the 7th War Bond Air Show at Wright Field in Dayton, pilot William C. Glasgow, flying the XP-55 prototype, attempted to perform a slow roll. However, he lost altitude and crashed close to a highway near the airfield. Pieces of debris hit a civilian crowd nearby, resulting in various people and the pilot's loss. After this tragedy, the project was cancelled once and for all. Antonov A-40 Kriya By the start of World War II, Soviet airborne forces had already dropped T-27 tankettes into combat from TB-3 bombers. But dropping tank crews separately in the middle of a battle was a strategic limitation that needed to be overcome. Oleg Antonov, an airplane designer, was assigned this problematic task. A Soviet Air Force directive ordered him to give Soviet heavy tanks wings and fly them directly to the battlefield. The objective was to speed up the deployment during key offensives. Following certain paratrooper units' success, the USSR was sure that the concept of tanks falling from the sky was utterly feasible. And so Antonov attempted to fulfill this crazy requirement. Instead of building a special type of glider, Antonov decided to add a detachable cradle to a T-60 light tank bearing biplane wings and a twin tail. That way the tank could be more mobile. Once on the battlefield, it could merely drop its wings and get ready for combat. In September 1942, Antonov successfully converted a tank and decided that either a Petlyakov PE-8 or a Tupolev TB-3 could handle carrying the tank into battle. For the test, the T-60 tank was lightened, removing its ammo, fuel capacity, and some of its armament. Soviet pilot Sergei Anokin, piloting a TB-3, carried the tank and had to drop it early to avoid losing control of the aircraft and risking a crash. Although the tank glided smoothly into the battlefield, it produced extreme drag that made it difficult for the plane to tow it for the desired speed of 160 km per hour. The project was eventually cancelled. However, the USSR went back to the idea during the Cold War to drop armored vehicles into combat. Mitsubishi J-8Ms Aware of the destruction raining down on Nazi Germany, the Japanese were desperate for a high-altitude interceptor fighter. Their solution was to reverse-engineer the Luftwaffe's futuristic rocket-powered Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet. The Empire of the Rising Sun was fully aware that sooner or later, hundreds of B-17 and B-29 American bombers would begin conducting bombing raids on mainland Japan as more islands fell to their control. Thus, they reached an agreement with Germany for the licensing of their latest air innovations. In mid-1944, a Japanese submarine left Kiel, Germany, carrying some designs, but it was sunk in the Atlantic by the USS Bogue. 
In February 1945, German U-boat 864 attempted to send Japan another prototype, but it was sunk with all its crew by the British HMS Venturer. This left Japan alone to build its own prototype. With nothing more than manuals and blueprints, the Japanese began working on their own version of the German Comet. It was dubbed Mitsubishi J-8M. Japanese commanders envisioned fleets of J-8M as ramming U.S. bombers, but progress on the prototype was slow. In July 1945, the first aircraft took to the skies, but an engine problem caused it to crash. After various modifications, the aircraft was meant to begin production in August 1945, but the U.S. dropped the atomic bombs before that happened. Two prototypes were captured by the U.S., and one was hidden in a forest cave for 20 years. <laughs>